Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. This is a shot of whiskey, and I just got over a cold. Kind of. I mean, I'm not sure how well you can hear the scratchiness in my throat. I can still kind of feel it, uh, even though I haven't really been quote-unquote sick for like about a week. It's kind of annoying, really. But uh, speaking of annoying, I've got another article that I wanted to share with you guys. So let's go ahead and just get right on into it. This one comes from a place called The Straits Time. I've honestly never heard of it, but it looks like they're based in Singapore or Southeast Asia in general, maybe. I don't know. Don't really care. Uh, but here is the title of the article. Woman accused of murdering five-year-old son. How can I kill a child? Look at my small body. So just by looking at the article title alone, it sounds as if though the woman is trying to make the excuse of, I'm this little petite woman, how am I capable of inflicting harm? Well, when the victim is a five-year-old child, you're not this petite little thing. You are a goddamn giant capable of doing a lot of damage. So your size argument is actually something that works against you assuming that the court system will do its job correctly but let's move on oh by the way this picture has been cut in half let's show you the entire thing here you go uh, that is the woman who is accused and her husband now off the top of my head I don't recall if the article clarifies why he's being charged with similar crimes but he is being charged as well but let's go ahead and take a look maybe I'm forgetting something Published November 14th, 2019, written by Selena, I'm assuming Loom is how that's pronounced. Three days after her severely scalded five-year-old son died in hospital, a woman told police that she had no intention to kill the child. So yeah, scalded. How am I able to kill a child? Just look at my small body. Aslin Arjuna said in a statement that was read out in court on Thursday, November 14th, in her ongoing trial for scalding the boy to death. In another statement, she said, I do not have the intention to pour the hot water on him if he did not show any attitude towards me. Okay, so let's first of all clarify something here. I'm pretty sure English is not her primary language. Or... That's also the case for the writer, and it could also be a little bit of both. So, for anybody who's thinking, oh, well, the English is choppy, yeah, the English is choppy, but you know what? They're doing a hell of a lot better of a job than I would be with Spanish, okay? I think it's, I think it's forgivable in this case. But, just looking at this, so the punishment that she did to the child was she poured hot water on him because he was giving her attitude. Okay. That right there also proves that your size really has nothing to do with it. Maybe your height, because you had to reach the hot water thing, and I'm pretty sure he couldn't. And, you know what, let's go ahead and show the picture. They have another picture further down in the article of the uh, hot water machine thing. Uh, it's an Akira brand. The little ominous there, since... Yeah. Akira. Watch the anime. It's 2019. It's when the story takes place. That kind of makes it a little bit funny. Um, and you'll see that there's a cage here in the picture as well. That actually plays into the story a little bit later on. But, um, yeah. This isn't the first time they punish this child using this method. Oslin and her husband... Ridzwan Mega Abdul Rahman, both 27, are being tried for murder by common intention for inflicting severe scald injuries on the boy. Each of them also faces several charges for other abusive acts, including confining the boy in a cage meant for the family's pet cat, hence the picture in the evidence file, pinching him with a pair of pliers. Okay, because apparently that made sense to do. God, what a bunch of sickos. And hitting him with a broom. You know, to me, that sounds like the most humane of the punishments this poor kid got. Man, if there is an afterlife, I really hope that boy's soul is resting peacefully. Dear God, that's horrible. 
Anyways, moving on. Between October 15th and October 22nd of 2016, the couple splashed hot water on him on at least four occasions using water from a hot water dispenser in the kitchen that is branded Akira. Okay. Now, here's the little bit of a fun part. This is how I know that this definitely seems like the case that this kid probably died from hot water burns. Rumor, four times within the span of about a week. Scientific tests show that the temperature of the water in the dispenser averaged 92.6 degrees Celsius. Now, if you're like me, an American, you don't go off of Celsius. You go off of Fahrenheit. So to make things easier, I went ahead and I calculated what that is. And unless my math really, really sucks, it's 198.68 degrees Fahrenheit. The coffee that you get from McDonald's is supposed to go no more than 190 degrees. I know that because I had that beaten into my head practically. You know, that, that whole lawsuit that happened many, many years ago with the old lady who burned herself from the coffee? Yeah, the reason why she won was because the coffee was too damn hot. It was above 190 degrees. And really, you don't want it to be even really close to that just to prevent the possibility of a burn. So, yeah, this poor little child got almost 200 degrees Fahrenheit water thrown on him on four separate occasions. And he's this little boy. I would not be surprised if he was also malnourished with the way that these asshole parents were treating him. <sighs> Moving on. When the boy collapsed after the last scalding incident, they took him to the hospital after a six hour delay. By them or the hospital? Oh, no, I guess it would be by them because of the way that they had written the sentence. So, yeah, it sounds like they had the kid there lying in pain for six hours before they decided to take him to the hospital. Maybe they knew that they had done something bad. Maybe. Just my speculation on that case. But he succumbed to his injuries on the morning of October 23rd. On Thursday, the third day of the couple's trial, a few of the statements they had given to the police after their arrest were read out when the officers who recorded them took the stand. Okay, now this part of the article, I do kind of feel like I should probably give a heads up. This part almost made me cry when I read this part of the story. I just find it to be that disgusting. Ridzwan, the father, said in a statement on October 27th that the victim was groaning in pain, saying, Sakit which is Malay for pain. And apparently he said it twice on the way to the hospital. So he's only able to say one word and it's pain. God, I hope that these parents burn in hell. Oslin said in a statement on October 26th that she only beat her son to discipline him. No, you, you did it because you needed the discipline, you bitch. If I had the intention of killing him, I would have killed my other children as well. Holy crap, what is wrong with you, lady? But all my other children are safe, and I do not beat them. I'm calling bullshit on that. I would not be surprised if you do stuff like this to them as well. Maybe not as much, but I am willing to bet that you have done stuff like this to them. As a mother, I would not have the heart to kill my own child. Yeah, there's plenty of women that will kill their own children and will do it gladly. Don't give me that mother crap. She also says she missed all her children. Who cares? They're probably in a safer environment now. Information on the identities of the victim and his siblings, apart from their parents' names, cannot be published under a gag order. Which is fair. I can understand that. In another statement taken on October 26th, Aslan said she did not know that what she had done could cause the boy's death. Okay, you know what? I suppose I can give a little leeway to that. I mean, who would expect that massive burns from hot water would kill someone? Well, maybe it was just the one time and that was the only thing that happened. Sure, why not? But uh, considering that you beat this child with a broom, you twist body parts with a plier... Ugh, what the hell? And you lock him in a cat cage. You'll probably do other stuff too that's not mentioned in this article. So, you know, 
Honestly, I'm not surprised that this boy's body was in so much pain from all the abuse and neglect that his body would probably just shut down for the sake of its own protection. You fucking sicko. Burn in hell, bitch. Burn in hell. Now, here's the very last part of the article, and I saved this one for last. The words are going to be bigger. I only wanted him to learn his lesson, she said. Why would I want to do this to him when I have never beaten the other children? After all, he is also my son. The trial continues. You're a sick human being, lady. Really, you're a sick human being. I hope you go to jail. I hope you never see the light of day ever again. And I hope both you and your husband meet Bubba. Or whatever the female version of Bubba is. So, what did you guys think of that heart-wrenching, stomach-churning story? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. And hopefully my next story, whatever I share, will be much more lighthearted. Until then, peace out everyone.